overcast afternoon. Lights turned on at the pitch at Tech Soccer Field. Senior day ceremony complete. We are off and running. Battle of the Birds, Golden Eagles, and Red Hawks. A crucial clash OBC play. Look at the starting goalkeepers as the first attempt goes upstairs. A shot by Southeast Missouri. That's brought to you by Legends Bank. Legendary service, extraordinary people, Legends Bank. A couple of first-year starters, Conrad for Tech, the sophomore. We just saw Sophia Elfrink, Josiah, only a freshman. Both of these goalkeepers, new to the starting roles, they've had good seasons. Yeah, and that's definitely a hard role to fill is being the goalkeeper, being that strong leader in the back, trying to keep everything organized. Of course, they have a good career coming into college, but learning to fill that starting role is definitely hard to do for that goalkeeper position. Elfrink's got the second most saves in the OVC, the second highest save percentage, an 857 mark. She has made 72 stops in her rookie campaign. A little bit of a layoff for both teams. Tech last spotted on the pitch. You got to go back to October 6th. In an impressive 2-0 win against SIUE at the time. Edwardsville came in without a loss in OVC play. Tech handed them their first one. They came back with a draw. So Edwardsville, three wins, one loss, two ties. They are not playing today. They've got 11 points. Morehead State, who is at Lindenwood, three wins, no losses, two draws. That's Tex OVC mark as well. So they have 11 points. Three teams, SIUE, Morehead, and Tech tied at first. And this SEMO team with eight points, a win they would pull even. Hawkins battling with Jekyll. Hawkins can secures for Tech. As we take a look at the starting lineups brought to you by Jostens. Jostens, the official recognition company of the OVC. Kayla Kerner, you're going to want to star her, the OVC Offensive Player of the Week. Scored two goals, both critical ones last week. And overall leads this team with four scores. Hawkins Heaven, now for Tech. They've got an OVC Player of the Week. It was Selma Askilson, who won the defensive honor. In her role in Tech's 2-0 clean sheet against Edwardsville. We have a battle today of the OVC Offensive Player of the Week and the OVC Defensive Player of the Week. Should be a good tug of war between the two. Conrad will collect. A little bit of a windy afternoon in Cookville, upward to 10 miles an hour out of the northeast. There has been an ongoing threat of rain. Don't like to see that. Don't like to say that. But it is what it is. Carla Votto. Upended Southeast Missouri looking to counter. Skiltson gets in the way. Nye in the middle. Shoot tops of Hawkins. Into touch. Devin Bargatze, the referee today. He is assisted by Gary Welch, John DeVolk. Jekyll, the freshman's throw. A lot of freshmen and sophomores in the CMO lineup. Here's Emma Bruni, batted back before blasted by Jackson. Raider, an all OVC player. She's able to connect with Bruni. Sadie Tony bats it off her. A little over four minutes in. Jekyll, the freshman with two goals this season. Megan Heiser looking to make something happen. Defensively, Carter was there. Throw for Jekyll. Simo so far looking pretty strong and going back to those keys of the match, just focusing on that midfield. They're playing pretty high, coming right off the kickoff. They're staying up the field and trying to control that possession up the field. The reason they're doing that, you can't really get goals scored on you if the ball's in your defensive half. 
So you keep it up front, and you're going to create more opportunities. That's exactly what they're shooting for here. Two teams that are red hot. Look at Tennessee Tech, one of the two unbeatens in the OVC. Three wins, two draws, no losses. But Southeast Missouri comes in on a four-match unbeaten streak as well. They lost their first OVC tangle, 2-0 to SIUE. Since then, they have had wins at EIU and Little Rock and ties against Lindenwood and last Sunday, Moorhead State. The 10-day layoff for Tech, a SEMO team. They didn't play Thursday as well, so it's been a week since the last time they were in action. Open space for Katie Tony. The freshman makes the move. Tony, that one is deflected and eventually controlled by Mariah Menino. It's a good opportunity there for Tennessee Tech, but one thing I want to point out is that ball from Emily Carlovato where she controlled it, dribbled it halfway up the field, and then got her eyes open and found the right pass to make, and that led Katie Tony to be able to create that opportunity and take that shot. Scored her second goal, Tony did, in Tech's last match. Unassisted strike, padded the advantage against Edwardsville. Here comes the goal kick. Mentioned SIUE not in action today. Moorhead is at Lindenwood. All the other OVC affairs getting underway at 1 o'clock as well, so we'll keep you updated on those scores. We're nearing the end of the regular season. Three matches, including this one, for both these teams. Kaiser in the middle. Going to go to Southeast Missouri. Tennessee Tech is called for the foul. It's the first one of the match. Always have to be careful with that ball that's coming in from the air, trying to challenge, trying to control the ball. A little bit too much contact, I think. Just a little bit. Swept her legs, bumped her in the hip. Got to be careful there. That was Carter. Red Hawks playing it out wide for Maddie Paulson. And the junior will swing it. And Menino collects. Makes the move on Tony. Hopkins gets a piece. It's into touch. Jekyll gets ready. Carla Vano sent it long, Natalie Jackson. Southeast Missouri, maybe something brewing with Heiser. Golden Eagles with Carla Vano. The senior captain, one of the seven seniors honored right before the start of the match, clears for Tech. It's a festive atmosphere. See all the balloons, the sidewalk chalk, posters. Makes for a fun game. Good crowd on hand here. Yeah, great crowd. Final, not the final home match, but the final weekend home match of the regular season for Tennessee Tech. There's a Thursday night tangle against Moorhead State. Should be a big one upcoming. But if they want to do senior day when it's on a weekend, it's the last day match here in Cookville. With traffic inside the box, looked like Conrad got a piece. Chasing Chloe Smith. It's going to be a Southeast Missouri throw in. The wind really starting to whip. 66 degrees at the first kick. Let's see how much the elements could play a factor. Rained a little bit earlier today. Forecast later on has some threat of showers. Chloe Smith, the OVC leader in points and tied for first in goal. Smith looking to make something happen. Giada Zo, the conference leader in assists, sliding it to Katie Tony. Tony in front. And the save made Elfrink. Coming on was Taylor. The stop by Elfrink. 
It's another great opportunity there for Tennessee Tech, putting all the pieces together. There you see that pass from Giada Zoe, and then some great vision from Katie Tony to find Bailey Taylor in the middle. Just got a little bit tripped up, couldn't capitalize and get that final touch to put it in the back of the net. And a good piece of goalkeeping, just find that ball and get on top of it and get regain control. That's exactly what they needed to do there. Good piece of goalkeeping. Without a doubt, the most serious threat in the early stage as we say that. But look here, that one is knocked over inside the box. Heiser looking to make something happen, goes wide. It's always those quick turnarounds you got to watch out. Simo did it well there. Get that turnover early, try to get it up the field. Don't give Tennessee Tech time to regain their structure. Try to find those quick shots. That's exactly what they did. They got two of them off early. They were even able to regain that deflection. Just didn't get that last shot on frame. Simo's second attempt. Tech has checked that third attempt. Golden Eagles have had two. And Tech the only one on frame. Feels like a good intensity for this one. There's just so much on the line. Southeast Missouri again a win. They would get to that 11 points. SIUE not playing today. So they've got 11. Moorhead is at Lindenwood. And then Tech 11 as well. So Simo still with an opportunity despite fifth place with eight points. A victory. They could still win this regular season. I think both teams are very aware of that also. You can see right off the kickoff, both teams are coming out super quick, trying to keep that pace of play higher than they normally would on just your average game because they know how much they're fighting for in these very important high games, you know, that we're talking about here. Every play counts in games like these. Macy Carter. She was also one of those seven seniors honored before the match. Ranking top 15 in program history. About 5,000 minutes logged in her tech tenure. Golden Eagles. Chloe Smith attempting to wrangle it home. And it will be a Southeast Missouri free kick, a Golden Eagle foul. It's another good call by the referee, but you have to watch. Of course, it's always referee discretion, but you see that foul and you see the ball get kicked out and then Simo regains possession there. Of course, it is referee discretion, but he could let that play on and let the counterattack possibility happen or just keep the game safe, call the foul, and give Simo the ball, the free kick, back where the foul was committed. Skiltson, freshman Hawkins, who has been a Golden Eagle starter now for quite a while, early on in her rookie season off the bench. Drift to the Southeast Missouri back line. Natalie Jackson, her 54th career start. Carlovato locates Smith. Trouble on the handle. Southeast Missouri takes over. Turner has skilts in there. There's Meredith Nye. Can the Golden Eagles transition? Katie Tony. Taylor takes. Taylor. Crossing, knocked away, Elfrink. It's a great piece of goalkeeping again by Simo there. Just find the ball, make contact. Of course, you always want to catch it, but she did her best to redirect the ball and then regain possession after that. Mark charging Chloe Smith. Freshman took charge. Found a way to make a play. Conrad. Golden Eagles have played five OVC matches. Conrad pitched a shutout in four of them. Tech might have something. Chloe Smith. Smith trying to make the maneuver. It rolls over the end line. We will have our first corner of this match. 
the turnover that Tennessee Tech is definitely happy to see. Chloe Smith doing her best to stay on top of the ball there. And then you saw Bailey Taylor and Katie Tony charging down the field, trying to help her out. Simo's defense got the ball out the back line, gave Tennessee Tech a corner kick. We'll see what happens here. Smith, who takes virtually all the set pieces, trying to roll it to Askilson, who's there from an offensive perspective. And he'll eventually roll in a touch. Simo stands tall. This is a very well-placed ball by Chloe Smith. It's always dangerous whenever you see those corner kicks and they just fly right through the box and nobody's in the right spot to get that touch. Being the goalkeeper in that position is definitely scary. Golden Eagles going to have a free kick after the Southeast Missouri foul. Tennessee Tech opportunistic situation. Try to unwrap the scoring. It's another one of those sweet spots for a free kick. Chloe Smith will line it up. Her drive, Smith, oh, what a save made, Elfrink. Full extension save there. It's very hard to do. She had her wall set up perfectly, and she knew the space that she had to cover, and she covered it. There you have another look at it. Wow. Beautiful save. What a shot that was by Smith. An even better save by Elfrink. The Golden Eagles having some chances through the set piece. How about the Smith corner? Rolls over the end line and Southeast Missouri feels like they can take a deep breath. It will be a goal kick. I think for Tennessee Tech with all of those quick opportunities, maybe next time they get their next opportunity, they will look at changing up some runs or put some positioning for those receiving players because if you have that corner kick, you have to make sure that there is a player to get that second touch and try to redirect it towards the goal. You can't just have them flying across. You said a little bit ago, the intensity, you can sort of feel it. Senior day, the crowd. Over those last few plays, I think the actual play on the pitch has matched it. Yeah, most definitely. And I think it will carry on for the rest of this game. I mean. We're only so far into this first half, but it hasn't slowed down a bit, and I think, if anything, it will just keep picking up. Both teams definitely fighting hard to keep the possession here. It'll be another one of those plays upcoming. Credit Simo's defense. Jackson making a play. And now the Red Hawks will control. Quick toss by Lejigrin. Red Hawks calling for it, slid to Jaco, but a couple of Golden Eagles converged defensively, including Hawkins, who blasted away. Two winning his head coaches in program history going toe to toe today. Steve Springthorpe for the Golden Eagles. Heather Nelson. Winning his head coach, he's the only head coach in program history. 24th season at the helm. 17 winning seasons over her first 23. It's a family affair with Coach Nelson. Husband Paul is an associate head coach. And their daughter, Taylor Nelson, on the team. It's got to be pretty cool. Yeah, and it's always helpful also to have some players on the pitch that are always on the same page as the coaches, you know. So I, my dad was one of my coaches growing up, and I was always the captain of some of those teams. So being able to, you know, live with your coach helps out a lot, and it helps all the players stay connected also. Dad the coach, you're the captain? Okay. Oldest daughter, Jordan. Nelson was also a Southeast Missouri soccer player. So again, really a family affair when you talk about SEMO soccer. Will Jagrin will throw it in. Right in front of some of those Golden Eagle posters honoring the Tennessee Tech seniors. 
Taylor. Giada Zoe. Tony secures. Still with it. Crossing. And there's El Frank. It's another good opportunity for Tennessee Tech, but they are missing that last final touch. And you see all of the players are there to receive it. We just have to place that final cross, that last pass in to be redirected. You have to find the right placement for it. So three shots by both sides, scoreless. Just over 20 minutes gone by Dylan Bozzano, Josiah Jackson on ESPN+. Plus. Great deal at stake. Late season tangle. Carlovato winds it up. Carlovato the save made by Elfrink. It's another shot by Tennessee Tech. They are finding the opportunities. You just have to find the right place to shoot it or the right pass to make to change up that angle of attack. Elfrink's doing a great job at that goalkeeper position, staying in the right spot, making every save that's come to her so far. Sitting at five foot ten, was an all district and all region basketball player in high school. Making some big saves. Again, just a freshman, Elfrink. Speaking of freshman, Lee handles for the Golden Eagles. Askilson goes to the SEMO bench, throw in for the Red Hawks. Certainly the most significant match of the other three that we're going to keep an eye on is Moorhead at Lindenwood. And in the 27th minute of that one, it's all scoreless. UT Martin leads Southern Indiana 1-0. That is midway through the first. And early in the second, Eastern Illinois leads Little Rock 1-0. EIU, Southern Indiana, and UT Martin, the three teams in the OVC without a victory. In fact, all three identical records, no wins, three losses, two draws. Only one team does not make the OVC tournament, eight of the nine. Secure a playoff bid. Way through this opening period. Tony Tangle with Jekyll. Giada Zoe. Meredith Nye has a little bit of space to operate. Giada Zoe shipped in the direction of Smith. Senior will track it down. Court is batted out of bounds. Lovato skies it. Taylor. Smith. Go just wide. Tennessee Tech again doing a great job of getting those numbers up the field. Here you'll have another look at that shot. And I want to point out also that pass from Bailey Taylor. A lot of times when you fill that striker role, that top player, a lot of people think, oh, you have to receive the ball, turn around, and take a shot. But she is doing a great job today at receiving the ball, getting her head up, and then maybe finding another opportunity. Whereas in that last play, she passes it off two or three times to get a better angle. A threat for Tech. Tony, the angle. Oh, the save by Elfrink. Another try knocked away. The freshman comes up big yet again. There you see another opportunity from Tennessee Tech. They have the numbers. They have all the pieces that they need. All they have to do now is find the back of the net. And threat after threat after threat for the Golden Eagles. Four stops now made by Elfrink. Here's another look at that last play. 
L Frank, another great reaction save. Those are some of the hardest. That quick on the ground ball, that foot save, that's hard to do. It's hard to find. Great execution there. Carter winds up the free kick. Carlovato in front, it's a goal! Lee scores it, and Tennessee Tech strikes first. You had to feel it coming there for Tennessee Tech. Here's another look at it. A great set piece playment, placement, great second touch, and then finally Allison Lee to find the final piece, put it in the back of the net, finish the play, score that first goal, take that lead. In the 26th minute, Allie Lee's got her third goal of her freshman campaign. Carter gets the assist. Again, going back to those keys to the match like we already talked about, stay offensive, put the pressure on, take the shots, create the opportunities. Tennessee Tech has done it all today. They are staying offensive. They're trying to keep the pressure high, keep the numbers high. Very good showing there. They put the pieces together. They finally found the back of the net. Inside 20 minutes remaining in the first. Tech scores off a set piece. Carter free kick. Lee split the pipes. Huge freshman season. Allison Lee, Powell, Tennessee product. Simo respond. Jekyll, she's a freshman. Tangled with Tony. And a foul. Goes against Simo. A little bit too much contact, a little bit too much aggression there. Have to make that call for sure. You always have to focus on the ball, not the player. Good call by the referee. Conrad, not been forced into action yet in terms of having to make a save. Her team leads by a goal. Yadazo to the back line for the Golden Eagles. Carl Lovato, Smith upended. Red Hawks looking to counter. With Caitlin Miller. Now Paulson. Smith converging. Zoe Houston upended. Emma Bruni. Paulson goes back for Jackson. Off the lid of Carl Lovato. Eventually in front of the Golden Eagle bench. I think Simo is definitely trying to respond and trying to stay up the field as high as they can here. But like the midfield, like we've been talking about so far in this game for Simo, is definitely going to be that connector piece because the attackers for Simo are staying high and doing their job well but then the midfield is a little bit divided whether they stay too far back and help the defense or they stay too far up and then get caught not helping out as much in the defense whereas if they find that good strong middle ground is when the pieces will all be put together correctly and they'll be able to make a successful attempt Carter I believe that was her first career assist Valuable piece for the Golden Eagle defense for the last few seasons. One of those seven seniors honored earlier. Giada Zoe. A crossing attempt. And Taylor sends it over the end line. Those are some great opportunities from Tennessee Tech. Something I would say that they've definitely worked on in the past week or so just getting that ball down the sideline and then driving it in because if you can have your other strikers and midfielders get into that 18-yard box, crowd it up, and try to find that next piece, 
it's a great opportunity get the ball down the sideline and drive it across it's a hard save to make and definitely hard attempts to defend Taylor went down it will be a foul against Southeast Missouri a Golden Eagle free kick onto the 16 minute mark It was Carter on a free kick. Lee scoring that got the Golden Eagles. Their first one today. Drifting drive, Carter. Now Lovato tracking it down with Bruni the assignment. Trying to beat a goal kick. Thirds into this first half. Tennessee Tech controls its own destiny in terms of winning the OVC. And the Golden Eagles may have something. Taylor, but defensively, Jackson, a nifty play. Taylor Clark comes in for Tech. Taylor will exit. Bailey Taylor, that is. Tech corner. Chloe Smith kept low, knocked away. That was Caitlin Miller. And the Golden Eagles will have another corner along the near side. Time it's Yao Giada Zo to try the corner. Sent Soren. Skilts in for Tennessee Tech. Taylor Clark just into the match. Ricochet away. Red Hawks will make a substitution. Emma Tucker. 5'10 sophomore out of Wentzville, Missouri. Chloe Smith. Clark as the defense converges. What a pass by Giada Zo. Smith still charging. Jackson knocking it away. Simo definitely doing a good job at trying to stay on top of the ball having one or two players at least getting in front and challenging the ball, getting a couple touches on it. That's why you saw that turn over there. We'll see Carl Lovato throw it here. Wants to locate Smith, trying to split through some traffic. Boy, Josiah, the last Really significant portion of this half has been played on that end of the field with numerous Golden Eagle offensive threats. Yeah, I think Tennessee Tech has done a great job at just keeping the numbers high and being able to hold that possession in that offensive half, staying under pressure, but then bringing the pressure also to Simo. And Simo has done a good job trying to stay in front, and the midfield is definitely settling in and helping out the defense as much as they can but then they don't really have any opportunities to get out. You can see their highest strikers just around the half field circle, so they don't have too many outlets at getting out of this trouble that they're stuck in. Smith kept it alive. Again, the Red Hawks forced to really try to step up defensively. The pressure that Tech continues to apply. Still Golden Eagle possession. Lovato on a bounce for Clark inside the box. Here's Lee with another try, and it ends up into the hands of Elfring. I think that's the outcome that Simo is looking for, is just to get it in Elfring's hands because that gives them the opportunity to get their players up the field. Because if it's a quick turnover, I think Tennessee Tech is just going to re-intercept that ball and bring it back forward. Whereas if they can recollect from the goalkeeper's hands, They've got this time to get their players up the field like you see. 
how can SEMO look to get something going offensively or at least play in Tech's portion of the pitch? Yeah, I think, you know, the midfield is definitely a big piece to that. I think if the midfield wants to be defensive-minded, it's going to be hard to get out of the trouble that they find themselves in. Whereas if the midfield takes the risk and lets the defense do their job, then the defense will look to pass it to the midfield, and then the midfield will then transition up into the attacking portion. So I think whether the midfield wants to play more defensive-minded or more offensive-minded is what is going to be the deciding factor there. Following the Red Hawk foul, Tech will play it for Askildson. The third career OVC Defensive Player of the Week. We said coming in that that would really be a good battle. As Skiltson, the defensive player of the week, really good freshman Kayla Kerner. Obviously, as a whole, we haven't heard a lot from the Red Hawk offense. Three shots, none on goal, but it seems like Tech has done a good job on that freshman Kerner. Carter. Skiltson will handle. Get it to Zoe Memel. Newly in. The Milwaukee transfer. Didn't actually have any playing time. Was at Milwaukee during the spring season of 2021. Meg Ivey from Cookville. One of the seven Golden Eagles seniors honored pre-match. Jill Chase. Ella Baldwin. Has the angle, Baldwin knifes that one away. Going to be a throw in. Something again that you have to look out for is that ball from Giada Zoe. And she's made a couple of those tonight. It's a big piece to this Tennessee Tech midfield is just having a creative midfielder. Of course, she's always making the right play, but you just have to look at the way she does it. A lot of people don't play the way she does, but somehow she always pulls off the right pass, and it always looks tricky. Hawkins wants to heave it to her. Giada Zoe ends up getting it, takes the attempt, and the save is made. Elfring gobbling up. Giada Zoe try. Another tricky save there. The shot was deflected, but then Elfrank was quick to jump on it, make that save. Just relentless Tennessee Tech today. 11 shots, 6 on goal. That was the fifth save made by Elfrank. That shot by Zoe Houston, the freshman, goes wide. It's not a bad opportunity there for Simo. Just get the ball rolling, take the shot, even if it's not on frame. You bring that presence into play. Maybe they'll try to get the first touch on this goal kick, turn it back around, and then find another shot. Maggie Conrad will tee up this goal kick. 26th minute score, Allison Lee. The assist by Carter, her first career assist. The freshman Lee's third career goal. One of the six tech shots on frame. That's been the difference. As the Golden Eagles looking to remain in first place. SIUE not playing today. They have two matches left in the regular year. About to be halftime, Moorhead and Lindenwood still scoreless. But a Golden Eagle win, coupled with either a Moorhead loss or tie, Tech would end this week first place all by themselves with just two matches remaining in the regular year. to Elena Jekyll. Played her club ball, St. Louis Scott Gallagher, along with fellow Red Hawks, Emma Tucker and Natalie Jackson. Really, you'll see that a lot from SEMO. They have a lot of continuity in the club ranks. How much is that a beneficial to play club and then play collegiately together? 
Yeah, I think something you always have to take into consideration, whether you're on a team, you're changing teams, you're getting recruited into college, is just chemistry. And a lot of teams, especially at the college level, have to rebuild and start fresh at the for chemistry. Whereas if you get a lot of players that are from the same place, they already know how each other play. They've seen each other play. They've played together for who knows how long. Then you bring them into college together, and that's chemistry that's already been built that SEMO is then just going to take advantage of and build on top of that. So Zoe Memel just made that pass. She played North Shore United with Elizabeth Raider, Maddie Paulson, Ella Baldwin. So a couple of different clubs, a lot of Red Hawk continuity, like we said. As Memel will now exit. Here comes Natalie Miller, speaking of continuity. Her sister, Caitlin Miller, who's been in this match, those two. More family ties with Seema. That just, that seems to be the theme. Yeah, there's her sister, Caitlin Miller. Houston. Tucker. Under five minutes left in this first half. Golden Eagle throw. SEMO doing their best to stay high here, trying to hold that pressure in these last couple of minutes, get a couple more shots on goal. You can see that midfield has definitely turned around. They're trying to help out the offense, trying to bring the presence up the field as high as they can. Here you see they've got that throw in. They could capitalize here. Zo trying to control for the purple and gold. Hit the deck. That's a foul. Caitlin Miller, the foul. Golden Eagle free kick. Macy Carter. Left the pitch at any point the last two seasons for Tech. Carla Votto. Here's Meredith Nye. Two-time All-OVC performer. Back to Hawkins. Nye chasing. The touch. Seema throw. Navi Washington comes in. Five time Junior Olympics national qualifier in track and field. A speedster. Athletic family. Dad played football at Mississippi Valley State. That's where Jerry Rice played football in college, right? Yeah, get, get the head nods from Thomas Cohort, Mike Lamer, Tech Sports Information Directors. Carlo Votto. Nye looking to make something happen. Now Tony. And that one roped out of bounds. Golden Eagle offensive presence. Tech attempting to double up this margin. Waning moments of the first. Elfring takes charge. More action on this end. We're down to under 90 seconds left till we'll hit the break. Take a look at the stats during the half. Highlights. Examine both teams' upcoming schedules. Preview the second half as well.
see this SEMO team, even off this throw in, trying to stay high up the field. They're going to receive this ball here and try to bring some players up. She doesn't have too much help there. It's hard to continue that attack up the field if you don't have anybody supporting you. Dallas Hawkins. We see one more serious threat before the break. Shot is out. I turn the corner. Some momentum. Giada Zoe. Ivy chasing, crossing. Ends up going over the end line. Should wrap up half number one. It's another great ball from Giada Zoe to close out this half. Well, what it half it was, if you're a Golden Eagle fan, 26th minute score by Ali Lee. Assist by Carter. That's the difference. 1-0. Tech leads. We've hit the break on ESPN+. Plus. And Taylor. Nice pre-match ceremony. Tech director of athletics, Mark Wilson, on hand. They got the frame jersey, the flowers, families out there. It's a cool frame jersey. It was the purple and gold one, like the gold stripe one. I like that one. Yeah, I'd gladly take one of those home, you know. <laughs> wish, wish I was out there playing. Still, a tradition that I guess has been lost. It used to be, I've, I've spoken of this before on senior day, but I guess they got rid of it. They used to line the, the players' numbers in styrofoam cups right beyond the goal. And a tradition unlike any other, at some point there would be a shot that would hit the cups and the cups would all just go flying. And all those numbers would just be messed up. And then they have to pick up the cups and everything. They stopped doing it. Maybe they just got tired of picking it up. That, it, it was one of those, like, work smarter, not harder. It was like, no matter what, that ball was going to hit the cups. And they were going to go flying. And then somebody has to be the player to just miss on purpose. Just aim for the, <laughs> aim for the numbers. Make the cups go flying. Bullseye. Still got the sidewalk chalk. The balloons, you see them there. The posters, some cool catchphrases. Each player. Senior day. All right, well, for Southeast Missouri, obviously they're chasing one. Halftime adjustments. What do the Red Hawks need to do? Really just to get something going offensively. Yeah, I think for the play, the pace of play so far in that first half was high. And I think SEMO was struggling to keep up a little bit. Of course, they were matching everything that Tennessee Tech could bring except for that one where they did score the goal. But I think just meet that pace of play and then maybe go beyond it. Just try to move the ball around quick. Try to hold that possession. Get the ball up the field and hold it up the field. Keep those numbers high. Hold the possession as long as you can. As they are getting ready here for Chloe Smith. Frank takes charge. It's a great ball by Tennessee Tech there. Well, Frank, who ended up stopping five shots, allowed the one goal in that first half. Maggie Conrad, the Golden Eagle keeper, not forced to make a save. How about the way El Frank did play in the first half? Number of key saves. Yeah, I think it's always good. And like you said, she's young, filling that starting role. So to have a goalkeeper that can do that and do it as well as she has today, it's definitely important, and she's going to have to carry that into this second half. But the saves that she made were phenomenal, and I'm sure she's going to try to do the same here. Could be tested. Katie Tony looking to make something happen. The Golden Eagles will have a look. It's knocked away. Taylor the attempt. Carla Votto sliced out of bounds. I think the other side to this Tennessee Tech offense that's been changed from previous games that we've seen is with that piece that Bailey Taylor is playing where she receives the ball and gets her head up and looks backwards to find a different angle. The other piece that comes along with that is the other thing that we've talked about, which is getting the ball down the sideline. So they are trying to get
get the ball to Bailey Taylor, and if she can't find the right outlet that she's looking for, she's just going to feed it out wide, and then they're going to try to bring it right back across. Definitely a different tactic tactic than what we've seen so far, but it seems to be working for them today. The Red Hawks might have something brewing. Selma has skills and strong defensively, denying the try by Kerner. Tech has done a nice job bottling up the OVC Offensive Player of the Week. The transition, Katie Tony makes the move. Tony. Giada Zoe attempting, Natalie Jackson. Giada Zoe takes it. It's over the top of the crossbar. It's a dangerous, dangerous play from Tennessee Tech there. Here you'll have another look at it. A fancy little steal from Giada Zoe. Keeper's best friend made that save there right off the crossbar. And hit that. Bounded over. A lot of what we saw in the first half we're seeing here in the early stages of the second. Golden Eagle aggressive on the attack. A number of early opportunities. It's Conrad. For Tech team, Josiah said it. Keys to the match, they lead the OVC with goals, assists, and points. Over the years, it's been defense. It's been the TTU calling card, and their defense is very strong. They've allowed only two goals in OVC play. Shutouts in four of the five matches coming in. Really a difference maker for this year's team offensively among the elites in the conference. Inside the box, Taylor upstairs. There's another shot for Tennessee Tech. And like you were talking about, that strong Tennessee Tech defense, we haven't talked much about them this season, but I don't think it's because they're not doing their job. I think it's just the focus point has changed because Tennessee Tech offense has showed up so much. And I think Tennessee Tech in these last couple of games have brought their pace of play up not just one, but probably two or three notches. They are just playing so fast, and they're just controlling all of the possession, all of the plays that are happening because it's built on that strong defense, and then they were able to transition into the midfield and the offense, and with that pace of play being a big piece of that, they're able to be creative with their opportunities. They're trying new things like we're seeing here today, this new offensive strategy that they're bringing to the table. They're able to do that because everything else has worked so far for them this season. Defensively as Skilson, the header connects with Lee. Responsible for the lone goal. Tony taking charge. See what the freshman has up her sleeve. The maneuver, Tony. That one's gobbled up by Elfrin. Got a cross and try. There's the downside of this new offensive strategy that Tennessee Tech has is if the cross isn't placed just right, it's a pretty easy save for the goalkeeper to make. Of course, if you can keep it out of the goalkeeper's hands, then it gets a little bit tricky, but until then, it's a pretty easy save for Simo to make. Tennessee Tech leading the shots battle 15 to four. Not a whole lot of threats and not one shot on point so far for Simo. Let's see if it changes here. It's going to be a corner. First one for the Red Hawks today. We always talk so highly of these set pieces. This corner kick could be the piece that Simo's looking for. But then we saw that Tennessee Tech defense, like we were talking about, they settled in just how they should, got in the right spot, and defended it well. Faith Liljegren batted back. Lilgergren trying to get it before Smith sent it soaring into touch. Simo bringing their presence into the offense. All of the defenders are up the field right here, trying to just hold that possession high. We'll see what they do. With Hawkins defensively. Red Hawks waiting for the throw. 
attempting to provide the equalizer. Jekyll's toss into the box. Peppered back out. Giada's out. The pass will see it roll out of bounds. And a quick throw for Southeast Missouri. It goes for high serve. Tripped up. High serve. Still trying to make something happen. Carver was able to get it away. Before pop by Palsy. Conrad is there. It's a good way to end that play for Tennessee Tech is to get it in Conrad's hands. Simo did a great job offensively there, not giving Tennessee Tech any time to mess up. Just bringing the ball right back in, sending it in. They had that throw in. They threw it in as quick as they possibly could, just trying to keep bringing that pressure and keeping their presence felt. Golden Eagles immediately the other end. And there's Chloe Smith with a goal. Taylor the cross, Smith the finish. Golden Eagles lead 2-0. There is that opportunity that Tennessee Tech has been bringing to the table. Here's another look at it, this Bailey Taylor cross. It's very hard to defend if you have the runs right, made at the right time, at the right place. It's an easy deflection to make. It's just hard to execute. So if Tennessee Tech can get on top of that, they're going to have a lot of success doing that. Smith's OVC leading sixth goal of the season. Broke the tie with Southern Indiana's Peyton Murphy. Her 13th career goal. She can get to 15 before her career is over. Would break into the top 10 in program history. Taylor the assist. Katie Tony an assist as well that helps start the score. in the 55th minute. Feels fitting for Smith, the all OVC first teamer last season. On senior day, on or before the match, and she would find a way to find the back of the net. Tech will make a change. Abby Garcia comes in for Tony. Boy, what a ball that was by Taylor. Yeah, and that's what Tennessee Tech is going to be looking for, I would say, for the rest of this game and probably into the end of the season. It's working for them. They're getting the ball down that sideline. When you drive it across like that, it's hard to get in the right position as a goalkeeper or as a defender because you never really know where the runs are going to be made. Very hard to defend, but it's also very hard to execute for the offense. Conrad comes up, had a streaking Kerner. Threat evaded. The ever dangerous Kayla Kerner. That's Stilton. Eludes Smith, but finds Taylor. And now back Carl Lovato. Quick crisp passing by TCU. Going for Carter. Flag is raised. Looks like a little bit of an offsides trap or something of the sort there. Just barely offsides. It's a good call by the assistant referee. Chloe Smith, who quietly, I guess you say quietly because she has six goals to lead the OVC, but is tied for second in the conference with four assists as well. She now has 16 points. That is also the most in the Ohio Valley Conference. Simo looking to get on the board. Bruni on a bounce. There's Conrad. First save made for the Golden Eagle keeper. SIUE not playing today. It is early in the second. Moorhead and Lindenwood still scoreless. Obviously a long way to go in this one. A 
long way to go in Lindenwood. But if those two scores hold up, Tech would have sole possession of first place with just two matches remaining in the regular season. To put themselves in a position where a win on Thursday, they would claim the regular season crown. Obviously, if things hold up the way they are now, long way to go, though. Smith and Liljegren. They're tangled up. It's another look at that. Just got a little bit tangled up. Laser by Skilton. Ten faith Liljegren. Lovato will throw. Knocked out of bounds. Stays Golden Eagle. Toss Carlovato again. Slowly but surely. The Otazel pocket picked by Jackson. Strong Simo defender. Chasing along the far side, Jekyll. Hawkins defensively the assignment. Right along the end line. It'll end up being a goal kick. Those are the opportunities that Simo definitely needs to be taking advantage of. Unfortunately, just a couple of missed touches. Goes out the end line. Tennessee Tech will get a goal kick here. Obviously in nature, now down two scores. The road that much more steeper, the hill to climb for Southeast Missouri. From a tactical standpoint, you see the timer. Third of the half gone by. What are some of the things that the Red Hawks now need to do chasing two goals? Yeah, I think 30 minutes is definitely plenty of time to score two goals, if not three. But I think the key piece is just to stay organized you have to be connected at all levels defense midfield and forwards they all have to act as one piece but they also have to hold that possession a key piece to that is just a good strong first touch getting your head up and finding the right pass that's a save right there megan heiser the second shot on goal for the red hawks both of them in this second half it's another good opportunity to get the ball rolling for Simo. They're going to try to intercept this ball and then bring it right back down the field again. Referee's calling a foul against Tennessee Tech here. So Simo will have another opportunity to bring the ball down the field. These are the opportunities that they're going to have to make the most of. Right there with Kerner. That'll end up being a Red Hawk foul. Golden Eagles will take it over. Simo here. Doubling up the foul count. Simo here looking to get the first touch on this ball. I think the first touch after a set piece or a goal kick or any ball that's coming from the defensive half, the first touch sets the tempo for the next play that's upcoming. So if they can get in front of the ball, regain the possession, and bring it back up the field, they will find some success soon. Golden Eagles stand tall with Carl Lovato. They wanted to sneak it to Heiser. And it ends up being a foul against Faith Liljegren. We have always talked highly of that Tennessee Tech defense. It's hard to get through that back line if they're exactly where they need to be every time the ball is coming down towards them. See Carter preparing for a free kick to help get the Golden Eagles off and running. Her free kick found Carl Lovato, then ended up for Allie Lee, who got the goal in the 26th minute. Giada Zoe goes too tall. And Tennessee Tech's second score came the 55th minute, Chloe Smith. This time it was Tony to start it. Connected with Taylor, just a dandy of a cross. Finishing touches by Smith. Near 
the 27 minute mark. Carter getting ready again. Be taking the Golden Eagle free kick. Hasn't always been that way this season. And it's come up big in this game. Yeah, those set pieces are always dangerous. This one's a little harder to capitalize on just because it's a little farther out. But still just as doable if you place the ball right. Carter. Flipped back Taylor. She's got the possession, takes the attempt, goes up and wide. I think something that Simo's going to have to look at to respond to those set pieces is just leave maybe one or two midfielders a little farther out of that 18-yard box, not necessarily defending, but ready to receive a deflection so they can turn the ball around and get it back up the field to create that counterattack. If they don't do that, they're just going to get stuck in this cycle of defense like you saw where Bailey Taylor received that ball and had another opportunity to take that shot. If Simo was there to receive, the ball's going the other way. Here's Hawkins again. The way that she has come on throughout the course of the season really helped stabilize Tech's defense, not a starter early. You look back for this Golden Eagle team, and we had the chance to, to do their home broadcast. Really rigorous non-conference schedule. I mean, a lot of tough teams, a lot of conference champions. They had a University of Tennessee, obviously, out of the SEC. We heard from Coach Springthorpe, and just in general, knowing that that should help set them up for OVC action, it really has. Yeah, I think coming into a season, if you're facing a lot of these tough teams, even if you're facing defeat game after game after game, eventually, once you get to this OVC play, we've seen a Tennessee Tech team that is playing at a much higher level, a much higher pace, and they're able to hold that pace for the entirety of the game. And I think that is also what is helping them score so much and create so many opportunities is they're just doing it fast. They're getting the ball up the field. They're creating opportunities, and they're capitalizing on them. That's what we've seen this season. I think it's continuing on this game. It'll continue on for the rest of the season. Coach Springthorpe, he said that he told his team after a September 15, 1-0 loss to Sanford, nationally ranked Sanford team. Not going to see a team like that in the OVC. The rest of the way was conference play. I mean, just different sort of squads than the ones that Tech faced in the non-conference. We'll get a yellow card right here. There's the foul. Jackson, and then she gets the card. Definitely a good call by the referee. You always have to watch their feet and if they're making an attempt on the ball or if they're just trying to get in the way and commit a foul like you saw there. Definitely looked like that Simo player was just going for Bailey Taylor's feet. Chloe Smith will take the free kick. We saw her almost from a similar spot other side. Put the attempt on point. Really was a brilliant save by Elfrin. Let's see what the senior who has scored a goal already in the second does here. Smith, shot, tipped up off the crossbar. It's in front of the goal. It is a goal. Tech scores it to go up 3-0. Here's another look at it off the crossbar. Deflection by Bailey Taylor. Set pieces are always dangerous for any team. Another good example, another goal coming as a result of a set piece. You just always have to find the ball, redirect it into the goal. That's what they did there. So like Smith earlier, a senior, Taylor does the job. Senior as well, her second goal of the season. A three-point afternoon for Bailey Taylor. Smith getting an assist. She's got a three-point effort. The 
67th minute. What a showing by Tennessee Tech this afternoon. You wondered potentially the lengthy layoff Southeast Missouri played last Sunday for Tech. It had been the previous Thursday, so 10 days off and how that might impact the Golden Eagles. They look fresh. They look good. Yeah, I think they're definitely playing, still holding that high pace of play, but we have seen the different angle of attack, the different strategy that they've brought to offense. Of course, they drew two fouls that led them to two goals, but that second goal was also a result of hard work, and that time off has given them time to rethink, re-strategize, and bring new cards to the table. Second goal, Taylor, fifth assist by Smith this season. Now has sole possession of second place in the OVC, only behind her teammate, Yao Giada Zhou, who has six assists. And an important goal for Bailey Taylor. From a statistical standpoint, that's her 10th career. So a nice round number. Nil. SIUE again not playing today. Moorhead State also with 11 points and an identical record to Tennessee Tech with three wins, no losses, two draws. They were in the 74th minute, 0 0 at Lindenwood. Again, the Golden Eagles. This time, Tony will roll it to Elfrink, who picks it up. And then rope toward the far side, where Garcia wanted to get it to Giada Zell. It was Baldwin there for Southeast Missouri. Now they're back by Tech. Still with it, Giada Zell. For Kerner. Has not attempted a shot today. Lena Croxel, one of the Golden Eagles seniors, honored before the match is in there for her sixth contest of the season. One goes out of bounds by Paulson. We're under 20 minutes left. Prime position for the purple and gold to get to 14 conference points. And really have a stranglehold on winning the OVC regular season. Skilts and twist that one in. Or it is knocked out of bounds. Emma Bruni, former All-OVC second-teamer. Nice touch off as Skilton's head. We'll have substitutions for both sides. Zoe Memel, Natalie Miller, Macy Hockett. That's for Southeast Missouri. 
Golden Eagles call on another senior in the form of Sarah Block. She gets the opportunity to play on her senior day. Skilton's touch. Shot is though trying to get to it. Bruni does for Simo. Slid out wide for Miller. With block in there defensively. Knock to Giadazo. It'll be a foul against Tech. This is going to be one of those opportunities for Simo if they want to score a goal and start a comeback. These set pieces are always going to be dangerous. Through the crowd. Clipped by a Skilton. Taylor will track it down for Tennessee Tech. Slide it over to Block. Taylor. Block will chase it. Rolls into touch. Final in Little Rock, a 1-1 draw, EIU in Little Rock. UT Martin leading Southern Indiana late. 77th minute in Ed Evansville, 1-0 Martin. Still scoreless, Moorhead and Lindenwood. That's the most crucial match of the three we listed in terms of first place. With just two matches remaining in the regular season after today. Me controlling it. Goes over to Ella Baldwin. Carter, that one will roll out of bounds. Bit slow to get up Carter. Looks to be okay though. Skiltson seizes possession. Gets it back almost. Then it goes for Natalie Jackson. The 5-4 senior, that's in touch. I think something else to look at for Simo's offense is they can only play as fast as their first touch will let them. So every pass they're making, that first touch and how much they control that they have on that ball is crucial for continuing their play up the field. Because if they have to pause and recollect and find the ball underneath their feet, of course, it's going to slow down their play, and Tennessee Tech is going to be right on top of them, ready to receive that ball, ready to intercept it, play some good defense. As they see Hocking, it ends up rolling all the way back to Elfring. Elfring today, five saves. She has allowed the three goals. Tech scoring twice after the halftime break with Chloe Smith in the 55th, Bailey Taylor in the 67th. First goal went by Lee for the Golden Eagles in the 26th. A whole lot of Tennessee Tech assists in this one with five total. Including Smith and Taylor. They each assisted on each other's goals in this second half. With two thirds of the period gone by. Natalie Miller to her Golden Eagle crowd. Croxel touching. Out to Conrad. Giving Tennessee Tech the possession. First, some more substitutions. Jekyll and Liljegren coming in for Southeast Missouri. Taylor Clark coming on for the Golden Eagles. Who had a quick touch right there. Natalie Miller tripped up. It goes to Katie Tony before Carter has a touch. All the way back to Conrad. Golden Eagle offense today. And Josiah, really in the second half, 
obviously 1-0 lead, but to score two more, how impressive. Yeah, I think Tennessee Tech has definitely had the focus of just trying to take more opportunities, take more shots, score more goals in this game. I think it's paid off for them. They're up 3-0 right now. Just bringing that new sense of urgency into the game, bringing the new offensive strategy that they brought to this game. It's a different Tennessee Tech team than we've seen in seasons past, and it's working for them. So I think they're just going to keep trying to carry that on into the end of this season, into the postseason, as far as it'll let them go. Under 13 minutes left. Tech 21 shots this afternoon, which is the second most they have had in a match this year, 27 in that scoreless draw against Lindenwood September 25th. They also had 20 tries at EIU. That was way back the OVC opener, September 18th. Tech won it, one nothing. They have limited SEMO and just six total shots only two here in this second half another senior comes in Meg Ivy for Tennessee Tech Regis Smiley, who took the shot for the Golden Eagles, the Tech freshman, entering the fold. TTU will host Moorhead State on Thursday. Ending the regular year at Little Rock a week from today. Conrad scoops it up. Southeast Missouri, meanwhile, they have been unbeaten in the last four. After today, they will go up against two of the teams without a win in the OVC. Southern Indiana hosting them in Cape Girardeau Thursday night. And next Sunday, a 1 o'clock kickoff at UT Martin. Hot cross by Lovato there for the Golden Eagles. Now to Sarah Block. Park offsides. It's an interesting call there for the offsides because, of course, she was offsides, but the rule says if you influence the play or something of the sort. So if the ball is played past you and you never really touch the ball, it's interesting to see how some refs will call it, some refs won't. Of course, she was going to go and then eventually get the ball and have a touch down the field, so they went ahead and called it. But say a defender was there to receive or the goalkeeper just came out early to take it, if she didn't touch the ball, they don't necessarily have to make that call. Bella Garrett comes in. Jaden Weston as well getting an opportunity. Springthorpe emptying the bench. Weston, only her fourth appearance this season, and for Garrett, her fourth. Emma Tucker comes in as well for Simo. That's a good feeling for a coach. When the score is what it is, and you can find a way to get some players who don't normally have a lot of playing time into the mix. I think also in this point in the season, it's a good way to add some depth to your bench. You have this strong lead that they're holding pretty well here. So get these players in the field. Get them some field experience. So if you need to rely on them later in the season, you can be confident in relying on them to fill the spots that they need to fill. Free kick 
on a bounce. Does roll over the end line. It's going to end up being a corner. Did glance off the Golden Eagle. Tennessee Tech with Carl Lovato, all sorts of a crowd. And the call will be a goal kick. With now under eight to play. Well, we talk a lot about Tech, the chance to win the OVC regular season. Obviously, get the conference crown, regular season championship. In terms of the OVC tournament, if you finish in the top two, you get a double bye straight to the semifinals. You only need to win two matches to win the tournament. If you're that one seed, you host the final four. So you host the semifinals, the match that the one seed plays in, the other match as well, which would be on a Friday in early November. And then Sunday is the championship. So if you win the regular season, obviously a lot comes with that. But from a postseason perspective, Josiah, getting the chance to host the semifinals and championship match, and then just getting the double bye to begin with. Yeah, I think, you know, everybody likes to play at their home field. So getting that number one seed, being able to play at your home turf where you know all the little bumps and divots and rough spots on the pitch as well as having your own hometown crowd to cheer you on, it's all in all a good outcome if you can get that first seed spot. So three and four seeds, they get a single buy. The three seed will play host to a match in which they're not involved in, but would be at their school, a first round. And then the winner of that match would play the three seed in a quarterfinal. Same thing goes for the fourth. So five through eight, no buys. In fact, both of these teams had to have that route last year in the OVC tournament where they were a five through eight seed. Both of the teams won two matches to get to the semifinals. So it is possible. 2019, Belmont was a six seed and found a way to win the OVC tournament. First time that's ever happened. The road just so much easier if you're a top two seed. You only have to win two matches. Golden Eagles looking prime on their way. But a massive tangle Thursday night against Moorhead. Ivy, it ricocheted out of bounds, so Tech will take a corner. Here we've already talked so much about these set pieces in this game, and we've seen two goals as a result of them. Tennessee Tech's going to try to bring as many players up into this box as they can. Of course, all of these seniors are looking to score a goal here. It's Sarah Block floating. Carlo Votto got upended. Trickles out back to Ivy. Weston Securin. It'll be a Golden Eagle thrower under five minutes left. Oh, wow. A late goal in the 88th minute by Moorhead. So they lead Lindenwood 1-0. If that goes final, Moorhead gets the 14 points. Tech would have 14 points. Those two teams will meet here Thursday night, essentially for all the marbles in the OVC regular season picture. Tech looking to add on. Golden Eagles with Ivy winds it up and it won't go. But wow, Josiah, what a dramatic goal for Moorhead really makes Thursday even more interesting. Yeah, big games upcoming. And I think Tennessee Tech was expecting Moorhead to win that game coming into this game here. And so Tennessee Tech having this time off before this game, being able to experiment with new things and trying them out in this game 
will prepare them for this Moorhead game that's upcoming. All in all, it's going to be a great game between Tennessee Tech and Moorhead. And looking for so long that Moorhead would come away with a draw. Tech going to get the win. And so the Golden Eagles would have 14 points. Moorhead would have 12. The two teams meet in Cookville Thursday night, meaning the road for Tennessee Tech. Not just a win, but a tie could get them there. It really sitting in the driver's seat, but it doesn't look like that'll be the case. It's just about to go final. It looks like both teams will have the same point total and same record. Both would be four wins, no losses, two draws. With under three to play. Senior Sarah Block. Her try and off the ladder out, Frank on a cross. It's always a good feeling there as a goalkeeper. When that corner comes in and you're confident that you can get your hands on it, you can catch that ball and regain control. It's a good piece of goalkeeping. Does officially go final. So Moorhead beats Lindenwood 1-0. They get to four wins, no losses, two draws, 14 points. That's what Tennessee Tech will be. With that shot, oh, the save is made, Conrad. It's a great shot Popped opportunity it over. for Simo. Trying to capitalize there, trying to get a last minute goal. Here's another look at that shot. Not too much space to take that shot. So for Simo to find that opening, no hesitation, take that shot. It's a good opportunity. Zoe Memel nearly put the Red Hawks on the board in the tilt to waning stages. Block tracks it down. Tennessee Tech scoring goals in the 26th minute by Allison Lee. 55th by Chloe Smith. 67th by Bailey Taylor. Trying to end with a fifth clean sheet in six OVC affairs. Another corner for TTU. They've attempted 23 total, or have had 23 shots. About to be their seventh corner. With 30 seconds left, Sarah Block went off Carl Lovato right in front, but the save is made by Elfrink. It's another good piece of goalkeeping, and it's hard to do because you're preparing for that corner to come in, but you never know exactly where it's going to come in. You have to turn your shoulders, shuffle your feet to try to get in the best position possible to make that save. She did it well there. Well, on senior day, all Tennessee Tech. Golden Eagles three, Red Hawks nothing. Tennessee Tech remains in first place. And a huge one Thursday night. Tech and Moorhead, both 14 points, both 